This video describes a model to understand the concept of wavefront impedance for electromagnetic waves, including radio waves, traveling in empty space. These waves were first predicted by Scottish physicist J.C. Maxwell in the 1860s. Maxwell's equations, as they came to be called, were mostly created by Carl Gauss, Charles Coulomb, Michael Faraday, and André Marie Ampere. Maxwell's summarized these equations, but also made important additions to them, and those additions had profound significance. Together, these four equations predicted the existence of free-traveling electromagnetic waves, and predicted their speed would equal the speed of light. This instantly suggested that visible light was actually a type of electromagnetic energy, and from that day forward the science of electromagnetics and optics were seen as flip sides of the same coin. Albert Einstein greatly admired his work, and Ludwig Boltzmann, quoting a line from the play Faust, said of his equations, Was it a god who wrote these lines? They remain today one of the most colossal achievements of modern science. Virtually all the electronic technologies we use today can be explained at the deepest level by one or more of Maxwell's equations. His equations also predicted that the strength of the electric and magnetic fields in these waves would naturally assume a specific ratio equal to 377 ohms. In many ways, this wavefront impedance is similar to the characteristic impedance of transmission lines, which also express a voltage-to-current ratio. It is difficult to visualize exactly what this number really means, but this video proposes a transmission line model to illustrate its meaning. That model uses only high school algebra and a handful of basic electromagnetic equations. After describing the model, it will then be tested with known constants to prove its validity. This begins by explaining an unusual kind of ohmmeter measurement called sheet resistance, which is generally performed on a very thin sheet of conductive material. The measurement itself is expressed in ohms per square, with no units of measure given for the square itself. It is basically an ordinary ohmmeter measurement, but it is performed on a square sample of the material as shown here. The oblong probes form two opposite sides of the square, and the separation distance between the probes is equal to the probe length, yielding a square geometry for the ohmmeter measurement. The actual size of the square is not important and can be arbitrarily selected. A larger square will yield a greater separation distance between the probes and therefore greater resistance. However, the probes must simultaneously be lengthened to retain the square geometry. This yields more parallel paths for the measurement current and this reduces the measured resistance by an amount that exactly compensates for the increased probe separation. For these reasons, the size of the measurement square is not important, and therefore it has no units of measure associated with it. The sheet resistance is simply expressed in ohms per square period, full stop. Sheet resistance is essentially a two-dimensional concept but with a few changes it can be extended into three dimensions. This can be done by removing the sheet of conductive material and extending the measurement probes away from the measurement point as shown here. In this case, the probes actually become parallel conductive strips that form the conductors of a twin lead transmission line. Like all lines, this line will have a specific value of characteristic impedance which will be purely resistive, and its value will be determined by the physical and electrical characteristics of the line itself.
If the speed of the signal on this line is assumed to equal the speed of light, and if the permittivity constant, also known as the dielectric constant, of the space between the lines is assumed to equal the measured value for empty space, then a few calculations will quickly reveal that the characteristic impedance of this twin lead transmission line is equal to 377 ohms, equal to Maxwell's predicted transmission impedance for wavefronts traveling in empty space. Therefore, this video suggests that the propagation impedance of free space wavefronts should properly be described as 377 ohms per square sample of the wavefront area. To prove this assertion, the transmission line model suggested here must be tested and proven to yield the same results as Maxwell's equ equations. For calculation purposes, assume the line conductors are 1 meter wide and separated by 1 meter of distance to yield a square cross section. Assume the length of the line is 3.0 times 10e plus 8 meters, or 1 light second long, as shown here. In one sense, these parallel conductors actually form the plates of an oblong capacitor whose capacitance value can be found with this equation. C equals epsilon 0 times A divided by D expressed in farads where C is the total capacitance expressed in farads, epsilon sub zero is the permittivity constant of a vacuum expressed in farads per meter, A is the mutual facing surface area of the two plates expressed in square meters, and D is the plate separation distance expressed in meters. In this case, A equals 3.0 times 10 E plus eight square meters, D equals 1.0 meter, and epsilon sub zero equals 8.85 times 10 e minus 12 farads per meter. These numbers yield a total capacitance for this line of 2.655 times 10 e minus 3 farads. If a 377 volt DC generator is connected to one end of this line, a charging current will surge along the line and completely charge the entire line in exactly one second of time. When that occurs, the resulting charge in coulombs stored in this capacitor can be found with this equation. Q equals C times E expressed in coulombs, where Q is the total charge stored in the capacitor in coulombs, C is the capacitance value expressed in farads, and E is the voltage across the capacitor expressed in volts. In this case, the total charge will be 3.7 times 10e plus 2 volts times 2.655 times 10e minus 3 farads. These numbers yield a total charge of 1.00 coulombs. Because one second of time was required to inject this charge into the line, the charging current drawn from the generator will be 1.0 coulombs per second, more commonly known as 1.0 amperes. In conclusion, a 377 volt driving signal will cause this line to draw a 1.0 amp charging current, and the drive point impedance observed by the generator is equal to 377 ohms equal to the free space wavefront impedance predicted by Maxwell's equations. This value of impedance is not sensitive to the size of the line's square cross-section. As long as the line's cross-section geometry remains square, the capacitance per meter of line length will remain constant and also the line's characteristic impedance, assuming the signal velocity does not change. Furthermore, the internal electric and magnetic fields are orthogonal to each other and also orthogonal to the direction of energy travel. These characteristics are identical to those of free traveling wavefronts moving through empty space. Because the size of the square cross section is completely arbitrary, 
it can arbitrarily be defined as infinitely large, which causes the conductors to vanish, leaving only the free traveling electric and magnetic fields of the wavefront itself. At this point, this video would normally end having explained the transmission line model as an explanation of Maxwell's wavefront impedance. But there is still a little more useful knowledge to remaining to be gleaned from it. By accounting for all the energy in this example, we can also derive the value for the permeability constant of empty space. In this example, the total energy injected into the line is given by this equation. Te equals E times I times T expressed in joules, where Te is the total energy injected into the line expressed in joules, E is the applied driving voltage in volts, I is the resulting line current in amperes, and T is the time required to charge the line in seconds. In this case, the total energy is equal to 377 joules. The potential energy stored in the capacitance of the line is given by this equation. PE equals one half times C times E squared expressed in joules, where PE is the potential energy in joules in the line's capacitance. C is the value of the capacitance expressed in farads and E is the voltage across the capacitance expressed in volts. In this case the potential energy equals 188.5 joules, but this only represents one half of the total energy applied to the line. 188.5 joules are missing. The remaining energy must be stored in the magnetic field of the line as kinetic energy. The kinetic energy stored in an inductor, in this case the inductance of the line, is given by this equation. Ke equals one half times L times I squared in joules, where Ke is the kinetic energy expressed in joules, L is the line inductance expressed in henrys, and I is the line current expressed in amperes. Since the line current, I, and the total inductive energy, Ke, are known, the total inductance of the line, L, can be calculated with the above equation, yielding a value of L equals 377 henrys. This value of inductance is distributed uniformly along the line's length, so the inductance per meter of line length can be found by dividing this value by the line's length expressed in meters. Dividing 3.77 times 10 e plus 2 henrys by 3.0 times 10 e plus 8 meters yields a value of 1.256 times 10 e minus 6 henrys per meter, and this agrees with the widely published and well-known permeability constant of empty space. This further validates the transmission line model by yielding another value already known to be true. It should now be evident that there are four fundamental quantities that are directly connected together by this model. 1. The primitivity constant of empty space expressed in farads per meter. 2. The permeability constant of empty space expressed in henrys per meter. 3. The transmission impedance of electromagnetic waves in empty space expressed in ohms per square. And 4. The speed of light in empty space expressed in meters per second. Using the model proposed here, and given the knowledge of the values for any two of these quantities, the values for the remaining two quantities can be calculated. In the example provided here, the primitivity constant of empty space and the speed of light were used to calculate the transmission impedance of empty space and the permeability constant of empty space. In contrast, James Clark Maxwell used laboratory measurements of the permittivity and permeability constants of empty space to calculate the speed of light and the transmission impedance for electromagnetic waves in empty space. 
A simple example shown in this video is no substitute for his work, but hopefully it has taken some of the mystery out of his predictions regarding electromagnetic wavefront impedance. There is more to say about this topic, but the major points have been covered here. Perhaps this is enough for one video. I might do another one on related topics at some later date, after May 2023. Thanks for your attention. Feel free to leave comments below, and if radio direction finding technology amuses you, please feel free to also visit my website at www.picodop.net. Note there are three P's in the Picodop. Thanks again, and adios.